quick video about the Lucas N1 Magneto. This one's off of an AJS 350 from 1949 stroke 50. It was actually manufactured in 1949. It's one of the first MS versions. Um, the problem is with the Magnetos is quite common is the spark is somewhat useless. Uh, the bike won't run and the spark gap is about um, it, well, it jumps less than half a millimetre, you can only just see it with the lights off and stuff like that. So I kind of assumed that the primary, um, the armature windings had gone uh, delaminated or something. But before I sent those off for rewinding, which is about 100 to 120 pounds roughly in the UK. Um, I've obviously checked this is fine. And I've bought one of these uh, capacitors, this is, this is an easy cap. Which is actually quite a, little, quite a nice little device, I give them credit for that. Um, it fits in their retreat, replaces an insulator. Move that out of the way. There's normally an insulator in there. And you just literally just unscrew all this um, contact breaker system. Put it in there. And now I've tested this. It now sparks at about 7mm. However, the original capacitor is obviously still in there. Now it's not a capacitor in the modern sense of a plastic or um, equivalent type um, so it's lurking I think in this end on this particular one so somehow we need to get this thing apart and um, disconnect that because I think just looking at a circuit diagram for one of these that it will probably be in parallel and even if there's some capacitance in there that will obviously affect the total capacitance of this um, and it will put that off skew I don't know I assume it will obviously be more so it could be any. It could raise this from I think 150 um, nanofarads to um, I don't know whatever this was supposed to be. Maybe double that. But if it was working, it can't be. So um, I don't know. Either way, it's going to skew the capacitance, which I think will obviously alter the time at which the spark occurs. And so even if you set this up correctly at um, I think it's 32 degrees BTDC, um, the spark may occur slightly later than that. And so the timing could be essentially impossible and it's not going to do your engine much good, of course, because you're going to have problems trying to time it. So I think one way or another, this is going to have to come apart. And um, if we want this to be done properly, we're going to have to disconnect that. Now, underneath here, you'll see there's a little screw. See that there? The camera's gone out of focus. That's um, a short-to-earth screw, so if you get over voltage inside on the windings, it's got somewhere to jump to the case. It stops um, damage to the uh, laminations inside on the windings. Um, I've started taking this one apart. As you can see, I've got a tap extractor, in case you were wondering what that rod was, in there. Because there was a funny little security type screw, which was almost burred off, so I couldn't actually undo it. So I had to put a little drill in there and run a tap extractor in. Now I'm going to sit down on the bench and take this apart. We notice on this one as well, while I'm here, you can tell which direction it rotates, because over here, just about making it out there we go there's an arrow pointing in the direction of rotation and I don't know this for a fact but I, there may possibly be a screw underneath this plate as well making it a bit tricky to get it out but we'll have a go at that I'll add to the video in a minute managed to get it all apart <clears throat> it wasn't actually too difficult to get this thing out uh, here's all the parts it's always quite useful to lay them out in the order of which they um, they came out the little earth screw which you need to take out from under there otherwise you may well scratch or chip this on the way out <clears throat> anyway and uh, the, the turns out the capacitor was actually not at the drive end if I'd read the uh, instructions or the uh, contents of the um, easy cap anyway so the capacitor is obviously tucked down in here so, and according to the instructions for disconnecting one of these, there is no easy way to do it on the M1. Now, these two ends are soldered together, so that's the live side, and that side is the earth down there. You can see because it's actually that screw touches the case or goes through to the case, it's obviously the earth side. So, somehow we need to get this thing apart and Obviously, it's bearing and slip ring and have to come off. If we look around here, there's some ends of screws. So there's obviously going to be some screw heads hiding behind the slip ring. So somehow now we're going to have to get this thing off 
and disconnect this capacitor. Now I'm taking it apart, I may as well take the capacitor out completely, which I'm assuming is connected in parallel to those two terminals, and there's just no wires that you can see. So sadly, it's going to have to come apart. So I'll crack on with that, and I'll carry on in a minute. <clears throat> so, it went back and it's done. And it was not easy. Um, so I've reassembled it. Sorry I didn't show you the bit in the middle. And as you can see there, there's a newly sleeved live. Camera doesn't want to focus very well. There we go. A newly sleeved live that side. And uh, an earth in there. Now, you have to take this thing apart, although the procedure is actually relatively simple once you get in it. It's just getting in it's a problem. And actual fact it's really difficult to get in there. Get in there. Now, it, I still think it's possible just to do this without taking it apart. I'm going to have a think about how I'm going to do that. Um, because once you get it apart, it's actually quite simple. The instructions are actually, I think, overly confusing or complicated. Essentially, what you need to do is just take this thing apart, pull the bearing off that end, followed by this slip ring. And yes, you do have to be careful because that pin there. That spike needs to touch down inside a little tiny hole in there. You do not want to bend that. You don't want to damage this. And getting this thing off is hell. Anyway, um, once you do get inside it, just down in here, all you need to do essentially is disconnect that earth, that wire, from that black box in there, which is the outside of the capacitor, the old one. Essentially, the capacitor will then have no earthing. And the live here actually will continue to pass straight through the capacitor and out through the screw which will eventually go in that hole inside there which goes to the contact breaker end. So in a nutshell what you're basically doing is running, uh, keeping a live from there to the contact breaker, disconnecting the earth there so the capacitor is essentially out of parallel now with the winding and it have rendered no, no use. Now I did say earlier I was going to take it out but I decided to leave it in because I thought to myself, well, this thing's probably quite well balanced. And if you take it out, it's probably going to upset that and I can't bother to fiddle around with it. Now, getting this thing off. This is the showstopper for pretty much everyone, I would imagine. Because I pulled at this thing like you can't imagine. It did not want to move at all. I tried to be lazy and use a conventional gear puller like this one, which isn't ideal. And you can see I made a few changes to it trying to get it to fit and it would just grip round like this and give it a little tug but all it did was bend that so I had to resort to uh, making a 360 degree gripper like this one sorry about the camera focus again the light's not great here to pull this thing out which then means you've got to get the four jaw on the lathe um, Cut up a load of blocks. It actually took me about three to four hours to make this thing, believe it or not. Bit of a nightmare because you've got to have this little groove in here which fits inside the inner race there. The best way to profile this inner race is to stick a bit of blue tack on it. On there, you can just see the profile. Stick a bit of blue tack and you get a good idea of what the, the positive image of that looks like. And then you can just kind of map it onto there and I just went around the inside of this a bit of a dremel just to give it the rough shape, kept trying and fitting it, squeezing it together and then it seemed to work quite well but even with this that did not want to come off that bearing and if you look carefully you can even see that it even bent my nice blob of aluminium bar here trying to get it off, eventually it came off once you get it off it's actually quite straightforward you've literally got to undo these two screws here that one on the opposite side, being careful of that pin. Whip this thing out, um, it all just falls apart, this just pops off there like that. And um, you've then got these two wires, you have to unsolder that one, we don't have to unsolder it because you can work pretty much without doing that. But you unsolder that one, I put, put a bit of sleeve on it, put it back on. Remember to put the insulator, this one stays as it is basically that side. You can tell because it's the one with the insulator. Down in there, I know the camera's Poor, but you'll see it on, on the website you can see the proper photos in higher res and this side is the only the only area of concern and again if I spin it round you can just about make out there that there's um, 
little black section inside like a square. Now that square has got a terminal that comes out just below that earth connection and the earth connection wraps around the side and into that black thing. And essentially you're just severing that link and then reconnecting the earth back to the outside as per normal. And that's all you need to do. It's really just a question of being careful whilst you um, put this thing back together. Which I'm about to do next. And all you need to do to put it back together is ideally you've got a lathe and just grip it gently, making sure you don't bend that. There, spin it up, and as you tighten these slowly, just to make sure it's as true as possible. Then um, reinsert this, making sure that the pin down there goes in that hole. And then when you do, just make sure you test the connection between there and the case to make sure you have actually got um, a resistance between there and there for a circuit. And then you put this horrible beast back on, just press it back on. They must have pressed this thing on with like a 100 ton press or something stupid because I've never had a bearing that tight. I normally just cut it off and hack it and put it in the bin, but can't in this case. Um, so the shims go on first, so that shims and then that back in. And then we're good to put it back in the bike, which I'll have a go. I'm just going to go and true it up on the lathe. And that's it for the moment. This true is just use something blunt deliberately like this stock here and just rub it up against the wheel and then just turn it manually like this whilst the screws are quite loose and then just tighten them as you go gently um, and that way it won't damage the actual armature but it will um, nicely align it or as best you can then just tighten them all up and we're good to go. I've reassembled this, um, greased up all the bearings and I've just set the points, they're oversized at the moment. Um, so you'll probably get a slightly weaker spark than normal. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if this thing works or not. We'll find out if we've done a good job, or it needs a rewind, or it's time for the bin, we'll find another one. There you go, that's pretty good to me. It's an oversized gap anyway. A little bit of spark in there off the uh, contact. Um, sparks good colour as well. So all in all, I think all in all, I think it's a pretty good job. If you've got any questions, uh, please direct them to the website, and I'll see if I can answer them for you.